What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 10 Triple H guys that have flopped in 2023. Now, I have to give fair criticism where it's due. Uh, some of the guys that Triple H has brought up or brought back into uh, to WWE or to the main roster, they have not panned out as well. And, uh, you know, if we're giving criticism to Vince McMahon and his decisions and his booking decisions, we got to give the same thing to Triple H, you know. So we're going to check out some of the individuals that honestly have not panned out since they came back to WWE or returned to the main roster or came up from NXT or wherever that Triple H wanted on the main roster. It has not paired, panned out. One person I can instantly think of is Karrion Cross. I don't know what they're doing with him. It's like he can't win a few to save his life we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support let's get right into this triple one. h took over wwe creative in 2022 he had a mission to bring back certain talents this was a welcome move as a number of talents had been unfairly released over the prior three years mm -hmm. this was going to give them a second chance as well as enhance the roster while some returns have been executed extremely well with names such as Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed and Chelsea Green all adding something new to the roster, there are unfortunately several names that have completely flopped since their return. Yep. All the names on this cross. list have talent. <laughs> He's definitely on this list, there, for sure. That would allow them to shine on Raw or SmackDown. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the worst rehires Triple H brought back. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Tegan Knox. It Where was made is clear during the behind the scenes footage of the Mae Young Classic that Triple H and Tegan Knox had a special connection. Therefore, when Triple H decided to re-sign Knox in late 2022, fans had high hopes for the Welsh-born star. Sadly, Knox's second run in WWE has been a colossal failure, as it's evident that WWE creative have zero idea what to do with her. Yeah. Knox is barely on television, and she's I often found she on, main there on the main she roster. She can't seem to decide if she's a heel or a babyface. She has so much potential, but WWE just don't know how to book her in an effective manner. Unfortunately, Knox, like several other names on this list, were brought Sheesh. back into the company without concrete creative plans in place. Yeah. This has ultimately meant that Knox has been completely lost in the shuffle. For Number sure. nine, Sarah Logan. Who? Fans were surprised when it was reported oh. that Sarah Logan had re-signed with WWE. Oh. Whilst Logan was talented, fans weren't exactly crying out to see her make a return. And this seemed yeah. like another instance of Triple H trying to stack the women's division as much as humanly yeah, she's possible. With the, Since uh, returning in late 2022, Logan has been renamed as Valhalla. Yeah. And she joins the Viking Raiders at ringside for all their matches. The return of Logan as Valhalla has done very little to impact the Viking Raiders standing in WWE as they continue to get little to no reaction on the main roster. Number yeah, eight, they Luke. can't even... I mean, they get wins here and there, but they don't win feuds either, so they don't... I mean, they're kind of just... She's kind of lumped in with, with them, you know what I'm saying? So that it doesn't really help her character as much either. Gallows and Carl Anderson. Yep. Anderson and Gallows making a WWE return. They're damn near JGs, bro. As a talented duo always. They legit got ambushed by one person. <laughs> Karen Cross took out both of them by himself. It was on an episode of SmackDown. It was uh to get AJ's attention. They got jumped <laughs> by one person. I think that should let you know how they view them, man. They seem to go where there's money to be made. The duo returned to WWE to assist AJ Styles in his feud with the Judgment Day, and other than the initial return ovation from the crowd, the duo have done very little. At all. The two are often found in dark matches, and the two struggle to receive a reaction from the live audience. WWE needs incredible tag teams for the tag division, and Anderson and Gallows are just that. They are. WWE have been reserved in pushing them up the card. Don't know Never why. Nevertheless, judging by the duo's social media antics, the two are perfectly happy to take a substantial paycheck for doing the bare minimum. Yes, Number I seven, guess. Candice LeRae. Yep. When it was reported that Candice LeRae had re-signed with WWE, fans were excited. LeRae had a tremendous run in NXT, and it could be argued that she should have received a reign as NXT Women's Champion. Mm -hmm. Fans on social media began to fantasy book feuds on the main roster for LeRae, with matches such as LeRae vs. Becky Lynch and yeah. LeRae vs. Charlotte Flair all being suggested. Unfortunately, LeRae's return has been a total mess, as she's been brought back with zero creative direction, 
has just been lingering backstage with nothing to do. Yep, she has a ton of potential in WWE, and if WWE put an ounce of effort in telling a compelling story with her, then maybe she'd be able to build up a genuine connection with the main roster audience. Johnny Gargano is probably going to be on this list Dexter too. Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis' WWE return got off to an exciting start. It did. He returned in the crowd, and it looked like WWE were going to deliver an invasion-style storyline. Loomis would be booked in a feud with The Miz, and whilst the feud started off well, Loomis quickly fell into the background. It's been made clear that WWE are unsure where exactly to place him on the show, as since his return, he's popped up in NXT. And After that Miz feud, that was it. <laughs> that was it. After he was stalking. It was funny and, and quite creepy and interesting when they first started doing this, him stalking him, and you see him in the crowd, and you see him in the background. I was like, okay, I like that. They finally did something with him, and, and then it, it just, Johnny Gargano got involved, and it it it, it, it got wwe fied if you know what WWE affying is, I'm just made that word up. It's basically it starts off good, and then they just start overcomplicating the story to the point of I right, now okay, just end it now. You had something good, you you overdid it. This is that situation with Dexter Loomis. They WWE affied him. <laughs> and now often found on main event. There were rumors that WWE were going to reform the popular stable known as The Way, but it looks like that's not even happening. The Way reforming would have been an exciting opportunity to explore the more comedic and entertaining side of Loomis' character, yet for whatever reason, they're more than happy to see him in the lower mid-card role. <sighs> Number 5. Emma Whilst Forgot she Emma was there. achieved major success in her first Once WWE again. run, she was well liked by the fanbase and had a reputation for being one of the most underrated women's wrestlers in the locker room. Therefore, Triple H bringing Emma back in 2022 was a smart move as she had serious potential to elevate the women's division. She would return in a losing effort to Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Although she lost, this highlighted that WWE had a ton of faith in her abilities. Sadly, this was the only highlight of Emma's return so far, and she's done absolutely nothing ever since. In 2023 so far, she's only won one match, and that Jeez. was on main event. This is a massive shame, as Emma does have the ability to be a major factor in the division, yet WWE have seemingly Sheesh. relegated her to jobber status. Number 4, Hit Row. Oh, yeah. On the surface, Hit Row's <laughs> WWE return was exciting, yet when it dawned on the WWE fan base that Swerve Strickland was now in AEW, uh -huh. fans were confused as to why Hit Row were even returning. Yeah. The three members of the faction are far too green for the main roster, and this is shown in their matches as there's been some rather dangerous botches and Top Dollar has, has even been given the nickname Flop Dollar. WWE. Bro, that is actually stuck. It's so messed up but funny. They call this nigga Flop Dollar. Michael Cole don't make it better on commentary, but yeah, he, he's a JG. All of them JGs. <laughs> made the decision to turn the trio uh, heel, which was a welcome move. But the smartest move possible would have been to send all three members back to NXT for further development. Possibly. The gimmick and presentation of the group has potential, but this is 2023 where in ring quality is imperative. Number three, Karrion Cross. I knew he had to be on the list because uh, they had something with him. It's like every feud they have something with him, and then he can't win the feud, so does, no one cares. It's well documented just how much oh. of a failure <laughs> was his first run on the main roster was. Vince McMahon <laughs> took everything that made Cross stand out in NXT and annihilated it. Cross was eventually released, which was completely unfair as Cross really wasn't given a fair chance to get over and to release a former NXT champion for virtually no reason yeah. was a bizarre decision. Nevertheless, Triple H brought Cross back and it looked like he was set to feud with Roman Reigns. Yeah, this at was some point. Be the feud that would take Cross to the next level. Like when he attacked Drew and then he looked at Roman and he's like, tick tock. I was like, they got something here. They got something here. It may not be right now, but you can do something here. And they did nothing because any feud he got into, he still lost. Level, yet for whatever reason, this feud never materialized. Cross has had notable feuds with the likes of Drew McIntyre, Rey Mysterio, and AJ Styles. But for some reason, the feuds have flopped in a major way. It's as if the fans just can't connect to Cross's persona, and whilst WWE are persisting with Cross being a regular feature on SmackDown, the casual audience just isn't invested in what WWE are giving them. Number two, yeah. Johnny Gargano. We all know how be on special list. Johnny Gargano's NXT run was. For he sure. was having classic matches on a monthly basis, and Gargano had built up a genuine connection with the audience. When he rejoined WWE in the summer of 2022, fans expected greatness out of Gargano. 
After all, Triple H was now booking Raw and SmackDown, and he was the one who presented him so well in NXT. Sadly, his run has been lackluster and lifeless. Yeah. He's barely done anything since returning, and WWE have refused to give him a meaningful program that would allow him to shine. It's unclear what's going on with Gargano in WWE, but this lazy presentation needs to change, or else the fans will completely disconnect with his entire character. Yeah, I don't know what they're and doing. And number one, him. Bray Wyatt. Yeah. What? Now apparently he's he's dealing with an illness. Um, so I, I'm not sure how accurate it is, but that's been what's been reported that he's dealing with an illness. So that's another reason why he's you know hasn't been around. Um, if that is the case. Wishing them a speedy recovery, you know what I'm saying? I, I really hope that he's able to, you know, uh, overcome whatever the situation is. Granted, you also got to take into consideration now that Vince is somewhat back, you know, it's it's kind of scary to even see if he does come back, uh, if he'll get utilized properly. Hell, Triple H had him for a little bit, and they utilized him a little bit. You know, in a, well, actually, not even a little bit. He was a prominent feature on SmackDown. Like, people were really hyped about what Bray was going to do and and who was going to really be involved with him going forward, even with the whole LA Knight situation. But once again, he got wwe fight and they had something good, and then they just completely overdid it, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. This Bray situation is... Quite interesting. One of the most shocking releases in WWE history came in 2021. They would release former WWE champion Bray Wyatt from his contract and fans were legitimately stunned. There were several reasons as to why Vince McMahon made the call to release Wyatt, but in October of 2022, Triple H made the celebrated decision to bring Wyatt back into the WWE family. His return at Extreme Rules received a thunderous ovation and they had to capitalize on this immense popularity. For sure. His first feud was with LA Knight, and the feud was somewhat entertaining. However, Wyatt's character arc involving Uncle Howdy was confusing and frustrating, and it made yeah. little sense. Wyatt was then set to feud with Bobby Lashley heading into WrestleMania uh -huh. 39, but due to an undisclosed illness, Wyatt had been away from TV for a considerable amount of time. Wyatt is at a point in his WWE career where fans are excited to see him back, yet there is discourse about what character he's going to bring with him. Some fans are pushing to see Wyatt revert back to basics with the cult version of himself, which could be a smart move as it would basically be a soft reset of yeah, Wyatt's character. Yeah, they could arc. do that. But there you have it, folks. Ten. I know other people want the Fiend, but then again, you know that that's nightmare-inducing as well. So I don't know, man. It's it's really gonna be interesting what they do with him if he is able to come back once again. Uh, WWE actually has quite a bit of uh, top tier talent that's out with injury right now. Um, so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if he is able to come back. Once again, it, it's all about the person's health at the end of the day. If they're not able to come back in a the ring, then I, I don't suggest it get forced. I'd rather someone be able to come back when they're able to, healthy and good, than, you know, they're not 100% and they're dealing with something. So, um wishing him a speedy recovery whatever it is and uh we'll see if he is able to come back but yeah it has not been all great uh things in the triple h era when he's booking things um i mean he's still booking things but when he was primarily it was just solely him for the most part everything hasn't been perfect you know but uh hopefully he's able to find some use for the individuals that are on this list because i do believe they you know deserve some type of opportunity to show themselves outside of main event like maybe get them some some main roster screen time on mondays or on fridays so comment down below let me know are there any other individuals you feel like triple h has not properly pushed in the right direction when it comes to on screen time proper feuds and and uh you know main event pushes potentially do you feel like triple h has missed out on some other individuals that weren't on this list but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still the undisputed youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace